Hey everybody, this is Pete. And in this video, I'm going to demonstrate a method for manipulating the family table data in the content center so that we can add fractional values for length, diameter, etc. And I'm just going to use a part, uh, a fastener part family as an example. But I want to do this all within the family. I have made a video in the past, and I'll put a link to it in the description, where we could edit the part template that's associated with this family, manipulate the formatting of the parameters, and use that as the driver for the data within the family table. But I want to keep it all inside the family table for this video. And so this is the family I was working on in my previous video where we fixed all sorts of duplicate file name issues. So I'm just going to launch the family table again. And Basically, the issue I'm trying to solve is here in the file name and probably more likely part number, where instead of the decimal values for the length, we would like to see those as fractional values. So to do that, we're going to have to add some columns because nominal length is in decimal. And there's not a whole lot you can do in the family table to convert numbers between, etc. So I'm going to have to create some custom columns. So I accidentally created one for the nominal diameter in my last video when I meant to make it for nominal length. But we'll leave this one here because I'm going to show you what happens if you don't make the columns in the family table first. I strongly recommend that you do that. So I'll go ahead and add a couple. We'll call this the calcs. And this is going to be a field where I'm going to do some calculations inside of Excel. So I don't actually want people to use this one in the family table. So I'll put a note there. And then I'm going to create the final column, which is the um, fractional final length. And this is one I'll actually type out for the caption. Perfect. So we make these columns first. And like I said, the best way to make these changes is going to be in, inside of Excel. So I'm going to go ahead and kick that off. And then I'll pause the video and we'll rejoin inside of Excel. Okay, so here we are in Excel. And as you can see, the columns have come across. And <clears throat> what we have is some text. So I've covered this in other videos. So I'm not going to get into it. It's text. But as it turns out, it's not completely like text. It's sort of like CSV data in a certain sense where we're getting this data from the database table. So it doesn't come over cleanly. So what I need to do first is grab this data and this is where the calculation columns in, comes into play. And in that column, I'm going to take the data and I'm going to massage it into the format that the customer wants. So I learned a really cool trick from excelcampus.com if I pick the top value and I, and I hit control shift and then the down arrow key, it actually picks all of the data, the active data up until the next empty cell for that column. So that's really easy. And then I'm going to paste it here and it stays selected, which is really cool for my next topic, which is going to be in the data tab. So in the data tab, there's a tool here, text to columns, which actually takes this data and it converts it into a number. So I grab this text to columns tool. I'm gonna to leave it as delimited, hit next. I've never played with these, so it seems like I just need to convert it. Hit next, and I'm gonna leave it as general so that I can format it how I wish. Go ahead and hit finish. And so now this is a number that I can manipulate and format the way that I want. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up to the home tab and uh, the drop down here. This is where I can format this particular amount of data. So I'll just click on this little norm format and the customer I was working with when we discovered this workflow had a very particular format that they wanted. They wanted to grab it as a fractional value and they wanted to have a hyphen between the values, but they also wanted to capture Occasionally, Inventor will have things like um, 5 sixteenths or 9 sixteenths for the value. So I'm going to add another question mark, which will give me two numbers in the denominator. So I'll go ahead and hit OK. 
and you'll see that these numbers all now take on a new format. So it works perfectly the way I want. The last step though is it needs to become text again. Otherwise we discovered is that Inventor likes to convert these back into numbers, which didn't get us anywhere. So we're gonna add in another equation, but as you've seen in other videos that I've made or maybe you've experienced it yourself, you have to convert the column to a general category first, otherwise your equations don't work. So I'll go ahead and do that first this time, save a little bit of time. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the text function. And inside the text function, I'm gonna grab this value, and then I, have, I get to format it however I wish. So because we could have different types of fractional numbers and the length goes up to 12 for this particular field, I'm gonna format it like this. I have to put it in quotes. I'm gonna go number, I'm gonna go number sign, number sign, dash, because that's what they want. And then number sign, number sign again, divided by dual number signs. Again, to handle those 16th conditions. And so once we're done with that equation, we hit enter and we'll probably say big deal because all it does is it takes the same thing we had before, but now it's text. So I wish I had a shortcut for this. I don't know one. So I'm just going to go as fast as I can down to the bottom, all 600 rows. And there we have it. So that's essentially all I need to do. It's a really quick and easy process. But before I leave, I want to show you what can happen if you generate these columns inside of Excel. So if I right click on nominal length and I insert this one, you'll see I can create a column from scratch. But I can also do this. I can copy a column and then I can paste it here. And then we can call it whatever we want. So I'm, you know, I'm super clever on Tuesday. So we'll call this something else. And then we'll name this new column test. So once I do that, I can hit the save button, close the Excel spreadsheet, and then I'll pop back into Inventor. Again, it's a big table. It's going to take a few moments. So I'll see you soon inside of Inventor. Okay, so we're back inside of Inventor. The changes have come across. And you can see now I've got my fractional nominal links, which I can use to drive my table. But before we get over to that bit, I just want to show you really quickly what happens with these columns that we made in Excel. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't work the way you think. So if I right click here and I look at column properties, notice it took on the column name from the original and it just made a copy like underscore one. So that's the danger if you copy data and paste it inside of Excel again, it actually takes on the column properties. I learned this when I was working with the client and that mm, makes it harder later to figure out what the column's actually doing. The other thing you have to be careful about is when we do that for test, in this case it worked, but sometimes I've noticed that it just says column. <laughs> so I had a really nice description of the column caption and then it just said column. So it's again, not very helpful when you're making the expressions. So just be careful if you're going to make some of these columns. I, again, make them in the table first before you get to the content or the Excel. So I'll come over to the right-hand side. This is where we had file name and part number. I'll just do the file name because I like to verify that I didn't make any mistakes. So just note the, the values here for the length. We'll edit that column property by right-clicking on it. And I'm just going to replace the NLG with my NLG fractional. Double click on that and hit OK. And you can see, yep, it makes the change. I also like to hit apply just to make sure I didn't make any mistakes. And there's now a duplicate names in there, but it looks like we're all set. And that's it. So we can make these changes inside the table without having to edit the part template. So I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know and have a blessed day.